is that when it comes to abortions, there's different kinds. Okay, I want to show you this. I got some, got some peanuts up here. For those of you if you're uh, listening and you can't see, I got a bowl of peanuts. Um, we know that within eight weeks, eight weeks, child already has fingers and toes. At eight weeks, it's, it's all of its systems, nervous system, immune system, everything is working. It's just tiny, tiny, even smaller than this. Little baby. Okay, at eight weeks old, we see there's, uh, the heartbeat has been beating for more than that already, but we see so many things that this, at eight weeks, the baby feels pain. The baby feels pain. They're saying they're, that a baby even could dream at this stage. Yet, at the first trimester, when a, ba- when a mother wants to have an abortion at this stage, the first trimester, first handful of weeks, when the baby is like this, they inject the mother, the, the, the mother takes a pill, which the pill ends up going to the uterus and it restricts blood flow. And it restricts everything that is keeping that baby attached and alive. It restricts it. The baby then suffocates and dies. And then eventually has to be passed through. If she can't make it, if she can make it to the clinic, then she passes it. If not, they recommend that you do it over a toilet. And you just flush it. That's first trimester. Second and third trimesters, now especially when a baby is about 20 weeks old, a baby can live at this time. We know at 20 weeks old, a baby, if, if for whatever reason it was an emergency and the baby had to be born, the baby could survive out of the womb at 20 weeks. That's second trimester, not even third. And there's a lot, and a lot of, now most abortions I think happen in the first, but there's a good percentage that happen in the second, in some place even the third. Where in that case, they don't have to take a pill. In this case, the baby is a full-grown baby. A lot bigger than this. And they inject the baby, whether through the head or through a different part, with a medicine that causes the baby to go to cardiac arrest. The baby dies. Then they take a, um, they take a form of like little pliers. Kind of like this. They take some pliers. This is a nutcracker, but they take pliers. And they go in. Because now to get the baby, they have to... Take it piece by piece so the, so the clamps go in and attach itself to certain parts of the baby and then break it off and pull it out. They grab the leg, pulls it out. Grabs the arm, pulls it out. The torso, pulls it out. Even the head itself is so big that the head has to be cracked. To then be scooped out. And then, when it's done, the abortionist has to take all those pieces, reassemble on a tray to make sure that it got all the pieces. Making sure there's not, they're not leaving anything left inside because that could cause greater damage to the mother. And then all these pieces, like you saw last year in all those videos, are then sold bit by bit. Different price value for different body parts on the black market. The world knows the name of one gorilla. The world knows the name of one lion. But you know what? God knows the name of every single baby that had to go through one of these. Every single one. He knows their name. All 55 million plus just in America alone. And you know what's another amazing too? God knows the name of every mother, every dad, every abortionist, every nurse, every parent, every grandparent that stood by and watched. And the amazing thing is that he still loves them too. That he desires, though he knows what you did to that gift, that he knows what you did to that child. He loves you still and desires to forgive you, desires to make things right. That's what makes him so great.